I'm Tom Massey, I'm a garden designer and it's May. I would have been at the Chelsea Flower Show building a garden for Yo Valley. I'm here at my property in southwest London. As you can see, it needs a bit of TLC. We're going to use plants grown for the Chelsea Flower Show uh, to create an organic style meadow in this space here and talk a bit about how to achieve a Chelsea look in your own front garden. I've weeded through, I've got rid of things that I don't want. I'm now going to um, incorporate into the soil this farmyard manure, um, which is a soil improver. Obviously down at Yo Valley they've got a fresh daily supply from the cows, but here in London we're a bit more limited. But you can still buy organic manure bagged, um, or you could try and find a, a local stables or uh, somewhere that would give you that manure to use on your garden. And the real benefit of manure is it's adding nutrient, it can act as a mulch to suppress weeds, putting it around your plants a couple of times a year is going to give a real good boost to those plants and to help them thrive and survive. So these plants were from a couple of thousand plants we had grown for the Chelsea Flower Show and one thing that we did with, with the other plants was to donate them to hospitals. It just cheers up the hospital space and I can't really think of a better place for them to go in these really difficult times. These plants have been grown without the use of any chemical pesticides or fertilizers in organic compost. And that means that there's no chemicals in there, there's no peat in there. These gold pots are actually made out of rice husks. So they're a biodegradable pot. It uh, saves using plastic. This is salvia indica. It's a really nice salvia. It's got really nice purple flowers. This is gonna come into bloom pretty soon I'd say, so hopefully in the next couple of days. Uh, this here is Anchusa Azura, um, it's a really nice deep blue flower, they actually are quite cool, you can freeze them in ice cubes uh, to put in your gin and tonics. Um, this here is Vabascum Violetta, this is uh, really good for insects, for pollinators, it's going to attract a lot of different insects into your garden. What I'm looking at as I'm placing, I'm looking at the way uh, the plants associate with each other. So I think this is a really nice combination here, the, the purple of this verbascum with the lime green of this euphorbia. As soon as these plants go in, I'm sure we're going to start seeing loads of insects and uh, bees and butterflies. And planting this kind of naturalistic wild planting in your front garden or in urban spaces creates wildlife corridors. So it creates areas of uh, natural habitat for lots and lots of different types of animals, lots and different types of insects. Going organic uh, and not using any chemicals on your planting protects things like bees because bees are poisoned by chemical pesticides, just like the insects you want to remove. When planting a meadow style garden, I always think if you mix ornamental grasses like this Medica altissima um, in with perennials, it gives the grasses give a nice sense of movement and they rustle and sway in the wind. Um, and sometimes perennials on their own can feel a bit blocky and heavy. So I think incorporating grasses all the way through uh, creates a really nice meadowy aesthetic. So it's now the end of the day, uh, we've spent the whole day planting and I'm really pleased with the finished look. So we've got probably in this small bed about 30 different species of plants. Lots and lots of different flowering perennials and grasses. Lots of these plants are uh, found at Yo Valley's organic garden down in Somerset as well. Welcome to the Yo Valley Organic Garden and the Yo Valley. The Mead family have been farming here in the southwest for hundreds of years and we have been farming organically for 25 of those. The garden which you can see behind me is very much at the heart of our farm. So the farm and the garden are completely linked and a lot of the principles we use in organic farming um, carry through to what we use in the garden, albeit on a much, much smaller scale of course. Now normally at this time of year I'd be welcoming lots and lots of visitors to the garden and so it's really odd for me that I'm standing here talking to you and there's nobody in the garden. Tom came down here and I met him for the first time. We had a good old chat, got on like a house on fire and I showed him the garden back in September last year. So this is a, this is a 
the main thing that really inspired me here was the way that the organic garden sits within the organic farm. Seeing the different types of habitats they've got here. I think it's often a misconception that organic means wild and chaotic and, you know, messy. It is, it's just a... It is quite a wild feeling garden, but has a more ornamental feel to it. I suppose you could describe it as a tamed, wild space. The garden here is full of playful bits of fun, and I like things that make people smile, make them in some way remember maybe a childhood experience, because we all have that. When you've got something that you're proud of, it's great to have the opportunity to show it off to people that can't necessarily come to Somerset and see it in real life. When the opportunity arose to do a Chelsea garden, I, well, I nearly fell off my chair. So this wetland area yeah. is an organic garden. It's something that hasn't really been done before on Main Avenue at Chelsea. So the opportunity to push boundaries and try and do something more sustainable, uh, more organically principled was quite exciting to me. So the reason organic is absolutely critical for me here is because it is working with and not against what nature has already given us. We are going with it. It's generally a kind of slow, gentle approach to gardening, which I think is actually more rewarding, rather than just having this kind of, you know, everything has to look amazing instantly and we'll just kill everything with, with chemicals. It's a much more gentle, slow approach. Any plant can be grown organically. It's quite easy, really. The main thing is to relax. Don't be too hasty to try and eliminate things that you may feel are doing your garden damage. So leave those poor old white fly, green fly, black fly. Go and have a cup of tea, breathe deeply, think again. When you next go, somebody is eating it. Marvellous. It's nature's way of making things work. And really, nature really does know best. We go to great pains to really encourage wildlife into the garden because it all helps, with the possible exception of a slug. We have four hives in the garden. We have a huge amount of bird life. And while we do actively feed the birds during the winter, we then stop feeding them to encourage them to then predate on the pests in the garden. The absolute heart of the point for me is that everything is natural and is inspired by nature. The ways that organic farming and organic gardening really cross over, I think it really starts with the soil. If the soil is in good heart, if it's high in nutrients, if it's well looked after, if it's not flooded with chemicals, if it's full of microorganisms and is full of worms doing a lot of your work for you, then that's a really good starting point for everything. And then you have great healthy plants that are resilient, that don't need fertilizers, because they're getting all their nutrients from the earth. For me, I've learned a lot actually coming to Yo Valley, seeing the organic garden, seeing the organic farm, and that the whole thing is kind of interwoven and tied together. It's all about the same principles, and that you can have a garden that is organically certified. It doesn't just mean messy, chaotic. It, it can be beautiful and orchestrated and organic. We're really, really hopeful that we can bring Tom's amazing design that's inspired by this place up to Chelsea next year. And we're really sorry that we're not doing it now. Thank you very much indeed for letting me show you around the garden and everybody stay safe and have a great virtual Chelsea.